This time, Horsepower teams up with a boss builder of champion motorcycles and Wyotech gearhead grads to build a 10-second competition street monster. It'll be the ultimate V-twin bike that you could actually win. You know we love making horsepower, and usually it's in motors, well, like that 440 back there, but not this time. You see, today you're going to witness the buildup of a hot rod bike that uses this for its power. It's a G2 126 cubic inch, 150 horse V-twin. Our special guest is the brains behind this awesome motor, a guy who was born to run fast and destined to ride on the leading edge of high performance. Meet George Bryce, one of the most dynamic forces in the world of NHRA Pro Stock Motorcycle Competition. As a rider, coach, and team owner, he's earned a half a dozen national championships and 69 event victories. It all started back when he and his wife Jackie would show up at local tracks in southern Georgia competing for small purses on the way to big dreams. After a successful racing career, the couple founded Star Racing in 1980 quickly earning a national reputation for their R&D, engine building, and pro machining. Soon, George was guiding other riders like the late, great John Myers. And against all odds, he helped an untested young rider named Angel Sampe to become the winningest female in the sport. This year, they're back together, with Angel riding this 350 horsepower V-twin Buell on the NHRA circuit. Also, recently he teamed up with George Smith of SNS Cycles to form a company called G2 Motorsports. Their new 126 cubic inch V twin is assembled here and is being transplanted into all kinds of bagger street bikes, offering the most kick in the pants power ever to hit the street. We're getting ready to discover some of SNS's genius in building our own G2 V twin with these parts and the bike that goes around it. Now the best part, Joe and I don't have to do any of the work. That's in the hands of a couple of gearhead school grads that have to finish their final exam here in the horsepower shop. Wildtech's Daytona Motorcycle Campus is a 100,000 square foot training facility where Steve Winston's staff teaches Asian, European, and domestic bike tech. This is truly the epicenter of motorcycling in this country. We're changing lives, we're giving guys uh, careers instead of jobs. Career training is hands-on, from diagnostics to repair. You learn how to properly use shop equipment and tools, well, like the flow bench. Here, a GSXR is ready for a 15,000 mile shakedown. In one of the special classes for pushrod and overhead cam motors. Students learn V-twin motor building, dyno testing, and engine tuning. Yeah, it may be school, but it's far from boring. This campus also provides tech training for personal watercraft, outboard, inboard, and diesel marine. Our student is able to go in as an entry-level technician and begin making money immediately for a dealership, and that's what's, in, that's what's important. Example, America's largest Harley dealership is next door. Bruce Rossmeyer's Daytona showroom has a staggering selection of around a thousand new Harleys to choose from. And with all the prep and service that goes on in this massive shop, well, it's no surprise the Rossmeyer Tech staff includes graduates from WyoTech. And no surprise, Horsepower chose these WyoTech bike techs to build a motor for the Supreme Street Machine. Rob Gibbs and James Mickelson from the Daytona campus, and Paul Gilbert from the Fremont, California campus. Here comes Coach Bryce riding to work in style. And here are the parts that comprise the 126 feet twin. Rob and James waste no time going to work. First, unbolting and separating the motor's case so they can install that massive crank with a four 316 stroke and heavy duty rods hanging on it. We got some lube going on in the squirters. We got Loctite going on the screws. Uh oh, too much silicone there, James. Remember, it's not a Chevy big block. These are very similar to the automotive cams. This particular style is a, a hydraulic grind, 640 lift, has 250 degrees duration at 50 thousandths lift. And uh, it's a gear driven set, which is very unique. Anything particularly uh, important about the way you install them? Sure. Um, actually, uh, 
you know, Joe, I really haven't installed many cams, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> then that's, that's all you need. I'm so impressed. <laughs> now this billet plate that's part of the oiling system can go on. Well, most reed valves are used uh, in musical instruments or in two strokes, but this is a pretty neat patented part. Residual oil carryover and also for crankcase ventilation. A lot of interesting parts going into this machine. Check out that rocker shaft, for example. At 7,000 RPM and tons of spring pressure and a really heavy weight valve, the camshaft's trying to push this around here and the valve's trying to push this around here so it ends up twisting on just like a torsion bar. The Wild Tech team is off to a good start, but soon we'll see if they can pick up the pace to keep this bike build on track. Hey, welcome back to Horsepower. Hey, George, how do you think this hot bike buildup is going so far? Looks great. Those guys are uh, really in the know. I was All right, very that's surprised. good. Let's get back and watch them. Let's do it. Now, this is our uh, positive displacement year. We do it next with another time in March. As soon as they get this buttoned up, Rob and James can move on to the valve tray. Put a little lube in here. Okay. And the camshaft. Okay. Got my two O rings oiled up and installed. Got my gasket on. Let's lay this on there. We have to run a lot of spring pressure, and because we have a lot of spring pressure, we want to run a travel limiter in our lifter to keep the lash being this hydraulic. Now I'm going to let my WyoTech man install the lifters for us. So this little pin right here. That's a pretty cool little trick. Keeps the lifters from turning. The fit between the lifter and the lifter bore is very, very important because that's how you maintain oil pressure in the lifter. If the lifter fit loose in the bore, then there would be a very good possibility we would have leak down and you'd lose the lash at, at idle. Every step is a new engine building lesson with this 126. They've got to install these studs next to make way for the motors, pistons, and rods. All right, next, big bore, big piston for it. Yeah, it's four and three eighths bore, which is bigger than your typical 454 Chevy. Okay. I want to share with you the ring package. We have your typical three-piece oil ring. We have a really cool second ring, ductile iron, taper face. And then we have a Molly top ring that's plasma sprayed. It's got a channel machine in it. The cutaway in the cylinder here matches the cutaway of the cylinder Joe's handling. Now, since the bores are so big, when the piston goes all the way down, you can see that if the piston comes through, here we go, coming down to the bottom, uh -huh. piston shows, well, these pistons would hit each other if we didn't have this notch on the piston and the cutaway, so the bores are so large, pistons would clank at the bottom, so that's why we have that cutaway. And that little bump goes down, of course. It's right good, sir. All right, perfect. B2 cylinder heads it's for big valves, both of them. 2.2 intake. 1-800 exhaust, they're big heavy stainless steel, big high flow, run big valve springs. It's quite a trick to get the head lined up with those studs, a tight fit with very little wiggle room. A little bit longer, sets in where we can have the rock arm actually pivot in this rocker assembly that he's putting together now where it'll push the valve open and the push rod will come up from the lifter while it pivots on the rocker shaft. If you run it all the way down till it bottoms out in the lifter and then we backed it off seven flats to get it back in the middle of our range of adjustability. This particular carburetor is a SNS Super G and what's neat about it is it's got an accelerator pump and when we put this 126 in our uh, baggers we need a, a carburetor that's very streetable to go along with how much horsepower we have. And this intake manifold, you can see it's a really large compared to uh, like a stock uh, 88 inch and also the odd shaped intake ports that our B2 cylinder heads have on our 126. I'm trying to help Paul line up the bolts on the back of the carburetor. Hey, great job guys. Well, hang with us. We'll meet you in the paint booth when we come back. Good. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. 
Horsepower is back with the 150 horse V-Twin just built by a team from WildTech. Now we go from power to pain. And for that, we pass the baton on to a couple of guys that came in from the WildTech campus in Sacramento, Gus Augustine and Elroy Wilridge. Now right now, they're prepping the bike's frame and getting it really smooth, ready for a shot of black paint. The G2 uses a carbon fiber front fender and balance, but the guys will have to paint the rear fender, this cover for the electronics, and of course the fuel tank. Now, Dan Dermott here heads up the Street Ride with Paint program on campus. What do you guys have planned artistically for this thing? We're going to start with a black base, then we're going to lay out flames down the sides and put realistic fire behind it. On the fender, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put taped flames on the sides and put realistic fire down the center of it. First, we're going to remove this tape that marks an imperfection like this scratch that we need to fix. We have a really big chip here, and we also have a messed up area here that would need some major repair. Down in the paint booth, the repaired areas get spot primed. Then it's time for some serious sanding and wet sanding. After laying on two coats of sealer, each piece gets two coats of base coat black and a coat of inner coat clear. Back in the shop, the artwork comes to life as Elroy lays down the low tack mask on the tank. Low tack means they come off easily without residue. Dan puts his years of experience to work outlining the flames before the students take over, masking and filling in the flame lick. Now the cool part, airbrush. Six coats of alternating yellow and candy colors. Dan sets the tank on fire, but the real heat is on Elroy, who has to mimic his mentor's style. I didn't think I was gonna get an opportunity like this this soon. The thing is, you gotta kinda lose yourself in it, you know? When you're dealing with fire, it's so sporadic and it's just so unstructured that you just gotta pretty much be fire. Just go with it. Did a good job on this, I mean, using the airbrush and everything, and good consistency, and uh, I like the way you used a lot of lines in there, your highlight spots on the SNS logo. It's real nice. Finally, some pinstriping to punctuate the graphics, and this hot rod bike is ready for assembly. <laughs> you will never get this damn shot. <laughs> you make me cry, man. All right, show them some of that West Sacramento pride. Horsepower's back with the ultimate hot rod bike build. And it all started with a team of gearheads from WildTech's Daytona and Fremont, California campuses, building a 126 V twin with parts from SNS Cycle, a street-friendly motor capable of 10-second runs on the strip. Meanwhile, a second team from WildTech's Sacramento campus provided the painting prowess necessary to give this warbird some serious attitude and personality. Well, the painters have left the building. Now it's time to put it all together so we can get this bad bike on the dyno before the end of the show. Now for this job, we've got Paul, James, and Rob back in action with assembly well underway. They've got the motor bolted to our freshly painted frame, now backed by a six-speed SNS transmission with overdrive. Well, so far so good, George, and I like the way you got all this power planted on nice rubber mounts for a little extra comfort. We like that at our age. That's exactly right. This is our uh, the front engine mount right here, which controls the engine travel, and also it's a uh, rubber mounted so that we get rid of that V-twin vibration. We on top we have a the uh, actual vertical alignment mount that we have to keep the engine straight in alignment so that the back wheel, the swing arm, and the engine are all tied together. In the back of the where the transmission and the swing arm are actually mounted, we're also rubber mounted just like on the uh, FL or the Road King baggers. Okay, on with the assembly. The hydraulic forks can go on next. By the way, these have adjustments for both rebound and dampening. Next to go on are the 17-inch magnesium wheels wrapped with Metzler rubber. 
When you ride a bike that has 150 horsepower, you want the best stopping power possible. In that case, we're using this Brembo setup that has 330 millimeter rotors. Now that's almost 13 inches, followed by a dual four piston caliper setup. Now check this out. The brake line T gets hidden inside the headlight shell. Now that's pretty slick. And then we finish up the front with the throttle. We ask our neighbor Rick from Muscle Car to pinstripe the front carbon fiber fender, but you know how those painters are. This guy doesn't know when to stop. Why he even pinstripe George's leg brake? Too easy. Guy's got to give me a harder one next time. Next, the flaming rear fender gets bolted up. Now notice how they pre-mounted the fender struts to keep from scratching the paint. Now the guys mount the rear wheel and tire and install the chain using a piece of pre-threaded wire. Now the rear shocks bolt to the swing arm and through the fender struts and into the frame. And then time to install the rear brake. What do you think so far? Well, it's looking good. The WildTech guys have done a great job and we're almost finished. All right. Oh, by the way, this is Derek who's been patiently supervising all the work behind the scenes. Well, like he does with George every day at G2. Let me guess, time for exhaust. Yep, the exhaust system's next. We have a new product here from uh, Rush Racing Products with, in conjunction with G2 Motorsports. It's a two into one exhaust, uh, big pipes for to handle the horsepower from this big engine we've got. And notice how it has uh, four bolt flanges, which will be extra insurance against any exhaust leaks. Finally, we get to see how that flaming fuel tank looks on top of this SDX. And I think the consensus is it looks pretty hot. We can fire it up after this. An ignition from IST, which stands for Intelligent Spark Technology. Man, this thing sounds awesome. Good job, guys. You really pulled this thing off. Now, we also need to give thanks to the students at the Blairsville, Pennsylvania campus for making this leather seat to finish off the WyoTech Warbird. Now the fun part for us horsepower guys, seeing what this two-wheel hot rod makes on the chassis dyno. Only problem is ours is a four-wheeler. We got to go to your place. Uh, please cue that transition, you know, the time lapse. <laughs> You guys said it'd make 150 horsepower. There's 153 that time. Way to go, man. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Well, I guess we're done here. Nope, we need to go outside and see if it'll make smoke. Oh, yeah. Now, that's quite a road burner, wouldn't you say? And we gotta say thanks to the guys from Wyo Tech that put it all together. You'll see this bike down the road on horsepower. Uh, just don't blink, you'll miss it. <laughs>